Okay, welcome to the wacky world of Martin Harvey, author and illustrator of Squiggly Pete the Pirate. Okay, I wanted to give you a little uh, insight into how I draw and paint Squiggly Pete. And here we are, starting off with some ink and a piece of nice watercolour paper. Um, I use various uh, brands of watercolour paper, but it's always, uh, I think, £140 uh, hot pressed. Hot pressed means it's nice and smooth. So when you're using things like this ink pen, uh, the ink flows nicely across it, doesn't catch up in the texture, and um, you can draw pretty much as you would in any other way. Um, I'm using a Sainsbury's uh, cartridge pen. Uh, I think it cost me about £3.99, but it works really nicely when you dip it into the ink. Um, the ink I use, I think, is Windsor & Newton Black Indian ink, and um, this is one of the uh, nicest ways I, I find to work. Anyway, oh, there we go, there's Squiggly Pete. Uh, you always start with the eyes, then a bit of nose, um, moustache and beard, um, the epaulets on his jacket. Oh, thumbs up. That means it's going well. And um, some of the groovy clothing that Pete wears. OK, <clears throat> so here we're just showing um, how I do the sketchy outline in ink. Um, and in a minute, I'm going to show you how I um, fill it in with paint. It's really just like colouring in. Say, oh, it's Squiggly Peter. There we go. OK, so next I'm going to show you how I paint. First of all, we start with a little water. This is plain standard water. You can just get out of your tap, uh, which is nice. And I use um, a mixture of Sennelier watercolour paints uh, and Windsor and & Newton. The Sennelier ones really are nice. Uh, they give a nice, rich, deep colour. Um, OK, I'm going to show you, I always start with filling in the flesh tones. Now I use uh, light yellow ochre, there you are, I've got a half pan of that because I use so much, um, with a little bit of uh, Windsor orange uh, faded in, to make a sort of like orangey sort of yellowy sort of skin colour. And then I just go around it like this, fill in the skin parts, there we are, face, hand, um, and I'll leave that to dry. And I'll come back and give a little bit of sort of sculpting and shadow to the, uh, the face and the hand in a minute. Meanwhile, while that's drying, I'm just going to whack on a bit of colour here. Um, I don't usually do it this quickly. I usually um, uh, let everything dry before I move on to the next stage. But because I don't want to make this video too long and boring, I'm, I'm sort of like whipping on with it quite quickly. So first of all, I'm going to apply lots of water here and give a base of, um, I think it's Windsor Blue from the Windsor & Newton set. Um, and then some, oh, look at that lovely colour. Yeah. I've just dipped the brush in there again um, to make it a little bit more intense. And look at that lovely sort of violet colour coming through there. Okay, so I'm going to let that um, bleed, as they say in watercolour terminology which means just spread across the page. And meanwhile, I've gone for some yellow ochre. OK, because I haven't let it dry, it's got a bit uh, wacky there, and it's literally bled or flowed into another part of the drawing. So I've just dabbed that with a piece of tissue, soak it up, and I'm reapplying that uh, blue. It's still bleeding in there, but never mind. I think I think the um, the way that paint works, the way that water works, the way that water colours work, it's it reflects uh, our natural world, the way that you know nature flows all around us. So I'm happy to let that paint flow. Okay. So meanwhile, I've got some um, Windsor red. Now that's a colour I think you know, which is. Uh, Windsor and Newton. Um, there's lots, there are hundreds and hundreds of watercolour category reds and oranges and yellows and stuff. Um, so you can use your favourite red, whatever here. And then I'm using a slightly deeper red to give a little bit of shadow, a little bit of colour to depth to one side. 
and this is all very very wet um, but that's okay right so now i'm going to help bring out the shadows in the hand a little bit of um it's just more yellow ochre and i think i've used some raw sienna some burnt sienna in there to give it a little bit yeah call it brown if you like um just to give a little bit more shadow and depth a little bit more 3d to the character's face now the earrings i'm going to use my favorite color yellow ochre sort of gold color and can you notice how i've left a little bit of light you know i haven't colored it in completely there i'm leaving little bits of light white paper um so that it looks like metallic uh, reflections and so on there, there's loads and loads of techniques you can use when you're painting with watercolors you can make things look dull or shiny depending on how uh, dry or wet you use your paint now there's a little bit of well this is mainly light yellow ochre and some darker yellow ochre there to give the folds in the leather collar of squiggly pete's jacket there we are some shadows around his chin, some shadows under his cuff. There, so he's given a thumbs up. He says, Say are it's Squiggly Pete. Okay, we're nearly done. This won't take long. Just fill in a little bit more detail on the um, his shiny earrings. Can you notice how his one good eye hasn't been fully coloured in yet? I'll do that in a minute. Just add a little bit of yellow to his teeth. Otherwise, it just looks like paper. Um, what am I doing now? Dabbling around with some blue and some grey. I think I've got Payne's Grey. Payne's Grey is a lovely, lovely watercolour. It's basically grey, but it's got little tints of blue in it. Um, and I've mixed it here with... Uh, there you go. Yes, a little, little dab to the eye makes it feel like it's actually a transparent eye. Um, anyway, I'm going to do more videos about sort of watercolour techniques, but there you go. Oh yes, I've gone for the Payne's Grey again. I know what I'm doing here. I think we're going to add some to the moustache. Yes, you are. Payne's Grey <clears throat> is a lovely watercolour pigment. It, it, um, it can be black, as, as it appears here, if you want it to. But it can also be used to do clouds. Uh, watery clouds you know like rain approaching all that sort of stuff and you can mix it with other things as well to desaturate colors it's one of my favorite watercolor paints actually Payne's grey okay just adding a little bit of um, burnt umber raw umber uh, brown if you like dark brown to the ears to give a little bit more three-dimensional and more Payne's grey to give squiggly Pete's eye patch well, that's pretty much it. It's easy, isn't it? Um, right. Well, I hope you like this. And uh, this Squiggly Pete. R say R. It's Squiggly Pete. Da -dum, da -dum, dum dum Oh yeah. Okay. Thanks for watching, folks. Bye. My name is Squiggly Peter. And I love my fish and chips. I love that salt and vinegar. What dribbles down me lips. And when I'm out there pirating, my pencil in my hand, I draw myself whatever I need or whatever comes to hand. Squiggly Pete, Squiggly Pete, Squiggly Pete, Squiggly Pete, Squiggly Pete, Squiggly Pete. Arr, the pirate.